Hello and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. Well, this episode was planned and mostly scripted prior to the election, which now looks like a resounding move in the right direction. With that said, it actually changes very little because the purpose of this episode is to show the very difficult headwinds of the business cycle that are coming at us. Inflation is still a problem, the unemployment picture is increasingly difficult, and asset prices are very vulnerable to disappointing business activity levels and profits. The long-term structural problem of the Fed and fiat money-fueled runaway government spending and exploding national debt remains unchallenged. Our thesis today is that we are at the top or near the top and probably started down in terms of aggregate business activity. We have argued that much of the nation's population has been in a recession for quite some time and that more and more people are entering their own personal recessions, especially in terms of their inflation-adjusted incomes. We expect this to continue and that it will have dramatic impacts on the economy over the next four-year presidential election cycle, no matter who is president or what party controls Congress. And this impact is expected to be independent of the actions taken over the next four years in government. Now, it can be made better or worse, but it cannot be legislated away. For a recent example of this, many people blamed the Biden administration for all the price inflation, and they definitely deserved a lot of blame. But the real cause was the actions of the Federal Reserve and the budget deficits of Congress, some of which happened during the first Trump administration. Now, of course, employment is a key metric. And Austrians always want to look below the headline number, which can be misleading. The unemployment rate in 2024 started at 3.7%. It peaked in July at 4.3% and is now at 4.1%. The overall unemployment rate worsens right before and during a recession. And these numbers are expected to get much worse Uh, even by government economists. And to understand that, we want to look at below those headline numbers to what really matters to future jobs and unemployment levels. Job openings in the economy peaked in March of 2022 at 12.2 million. They have declined to 7.4 million today. And job openings decline prior to and during a recession. Job openings in construction have fallen 39% since February, but remain very high. Job openings in manufacturing peaked in April of 2022 and have fallen by 50%, but again, are still pretty high. There's been a similar drop in job openings related to durable goods manufacturing. All of these numbers are expected to get much worse. Another key metric in the labor market is the average weekly hours of employees in the private sector, because of course you have to have private employment to pay for public employment. And now these numbers have always declined prior to and during recessions. They recently peaked in April of 2021 during COVID. Uh, It has been in a monthly decline ever since. And it has been at or below the normal or average level since March of 2023. It has only been lower during the great financial crisis and during COVID months. Now, this is a new data series, and it it could be expected to reach an all-time low during this cycle. Uh, And job creation statistics, the sort of leading edge of the job market, have declined all year long, 
and have faced some very stiff downward or negative revisions. In other words, the initial release was always much rosier than the final numbers or the final calculations. The latest report on job creation was especially negative, indicating no new job creation and negative private sector job creation. So in the household, let's look at credit card debt. Delinquency rates on credit cards are up sharply, but are still only at a normal or average rate. However, credit card balances are up 50% from the COVID period pay down lows. Average credit card interest rates are up from less than 15% to almost 20 per, almost 22%, uh, a 50% increase. The delinquency rate on credit cards for small banks is at an all-time high right now. All types of consumer loans now have topped $1 trillion, an all-time high. With large balances and higher rates on debt, delinquencies can be expected to climb to high levels and to be a significant drag on the economy. In terms of auto loans, uh, two years before COVID, the average loan value was $31,000 for a new car, and that was financed at a rate of about 5%. The last two years have seen the average financing on new cars at $39,000 and financed at an interest rate of about 8%. Loan delinquencies on automobiles is now at a 13-year high. With large balances and high rates, delinquencies can be expected to climb higher and put significant pressure on consumer spending, the new car market, and used car prices. The next episodes will review some of the proper policies to be followed with respect to addressing some of these problems, undoing the structural problems in the economy and returning to prosperity.